Hello and good evening, children. I'm glad to see you again for another WWJ session. We've prepared a great program for you this evening, and I'm extremely excited for you to see the devoted youth of our church serve the Lord in the best way they know how. Tonight's sermon's title is The Boy Who Was Chosen, and we will be hearing from Puck. I'm sure his words will truly teach us important lessons. Before we get into the service, I just want to thank you for tuning in again. These young children have worked hard for you to learn new ways to walk and work with Jesus. Well, it's time to start the program. I hope you will be blessed, and hopefully you'll come back again for more. Enjoy the service. faces tonight. I am very glad you could come because tonight we have a very special program. It is called The Boy Who Was Chosen. How many of you have ever had to follow directions? I think all of us have had to follow directions. We have to follow the directions of our parents and our teachers. Sometimes, when we buy something, we have to follow directions to put it together. Imagine what the world would be like if no one followed directions. The world would be a mess. Can you follow directions? I'm going to give you a little test. It will show how well you can listen and how well you can follow directions. Clap your hands in front of your face. That's right. Most of you were able to follow that direction. Maybe you need something harder. Raise your left hand. That was a little harder, wasn't it? But most of you raised your left hand. Fold your hands so that all your fingers are all inside. That was harder yet, but you're doing very well. I think you're ready for more directions. Please listen very carefully. I am going to give you clues about a certain kind of animal. When you think you know what the animal is, I want you to smile. Smile real big, but don't say a word. When you think you know what the animal is, don't raise your hand. 
when you think you know what the animal is, don't say a word. Don't even whisper a word. What should you do when you know what the what should you do when you know the answer? Yes, you should smile. Can you do that? Can you follow these directions? Okay. Here is the first clue. The animal hates to be alone. The animal has poor eyesight, but it can hear very well. If this animal falls on its back, it cannot get up. It is very gentle and is easily frightened. It grows two front teeth every year until it has eight. It has many enemies such as wolves, bears, and lions. It makes a bleeding sound. It says, bah, bah. That's the end of my clues. I see a lot of smiles. Now, when I count to three, everyone say the name of this animal with me. One, two, three, sheep. Yes, I was thinking of a sheep. My story today is about a boy who took care of sheep. He was a shepherd boy. His name was David. David had seven older brothers. They were handsome, fine-looking young men. They felt too grown up to take care of a sheep. Because David was the youngest, he watched the family's flock of sheep. David liked the sheep, and the sheep liked him. Each morning, David called the sheep. He took them out on the hills to eat grass. David always took three things with him. He took, he took his shepherd's staff, he took his sling, and he took his ark. Each day, David found a green, grassy place for the sheep. They nibbled at the grass and played silly sheep games. And David sang and played his harp. But he didn't forget the sheep. He always watched to make sure the sheep were safe. Sometimes, a lamb wandered off by itself. Then David ran after the lamb. He knew that hungry jackals were out there. David brought the lamb back before the jackals could get it. Sometimes, David practiced with a sling. He put a stone in the sling. He would try to hit that red rock over there. Whirr! David swung, David swung the sling around and around. He let go of one end of the sling. The stone whizzed through the air. Chink! The stone hit the red rock. David was a good shot. He could hit just about anything, even a little hole in a tree. One day, David heard a strange, scary noise. It sounded like a big animal creeping close to the flock, a big animal that wanted to grab a lamb and eat it for dinner. Yes, it was a big, hungry animal. It was a bear. David put a stone in a sling. He swung the sling around and around. At just the right time, he sent the stone flying toward the bear. It hit the bear in the head. The bear fell down dead. Now, it would not bother the sheep anymore. Yes, David took good care of his father's sheep. One day, Samuel the prophet came to David's town. Samuel was on a secret mission. God had sent him to find someone to be the next king. God told him to go to David's house. Samuel spoke to David's father, Jesse. He told Jesse, show me your sons. But Samuel didn't say why he wanted to see them. Jesse called all of David's brothers. They were fine looking young men. Samuel felt sure that God would choose one of them to be the king. David's older brother came to meet Samuel. He was tall and handsome. Samuel thought, this must be the one. But God whispered to Samuel, this is not the one I have chosen. You see his outward appearance, but I can see his heart. Now the next oldest brother came down to meet the prophet. God didn't choose this young man either. 
One by one, all seven brothers stood before the prophet. Each time, God told Samuel, this is not the one. Samuel was puzzled. He asked Jesse, don't you have any more sons? Jesse said, well, there is one more. He's just a boy. He's out taking care of the sheep. Samuel said, send him, send for him. I must see this boy. A servant hurried to find David. He told David, run home. The prophet Samuel wants to see you. David ran as fast as he could. Soon, he stood before Samuel. Samuel looked at David. He was just a boy. How could he be the one God had chosen? But God whispered, this is the one. Anoint him with oil. I have chosen him to be the next king. Samuel poured some oil on David's head. David did not know what God had chosen him to do, but he knew it must be something very special. Now, he wanted more than ever to be a good shepherd boy. After all, he had been chosen by God. Many years later, David did become the king. He was a good king and ruled his people well. God could trust David to be a good king because he had been a faithful shepherd boy. When Samuel looked at all of David's fine brothers, he did not know who was worthy to be king. But God knew because God can see inside the heart. I'm not talking about the heart that pumps blood into our veins. I'm talking about the place the Bible calls our heart. It is the place where we think and feel and where we make decisions. We cannot know what is in another person's heart. We don't know what they are thinking or feeling, but God knows. God told Samuel, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. What do we see when we look at someone else? Fill in the blank. Man looks at the... What does God see when he looks at us? Fill in the blank. The, the Lord looks at the... Say the whole verse with me. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel verse 7. Here are more blanks for you to fill in. Man at the appearance but the Lord at the 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. Now see the whole verse. Man looks at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Good. Here are the first letters of each word. Say the verse with me. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Jesus sees my heart. This is what the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Let's say this verse together one more time. Man looks at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Today, Jesus is looking for men and women and boys and girls. He wants them to be princes and princesses in the kingdom of heaven. He will find his princes and princesses the same way he found David. He will look into each person's heart. He will judge our hearts. Would you like to know the time of Jesus' judgment? The answer is in Revelation 14, verse 7. This is a special prophecy for us today. It says, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. The judgment time has come. It is now. What happens in the judgment? When did it begin? The Bible has the answers. 
Daniel 8 verse 14 says, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. This is one of the most exciting prophecies in the Bible. It's like a huge mystery. When we figure out the clues, we know something very important. The sanctuary is in heaven. This is where Jesus is right now. Inside the sanctuary are the records of everyone who ever lived. Your records are there, my records are there. Jesus is looking at the records of each person. We call this the investigative judgment. During the investigative judgment, Jesus sees everything we ever did. He even sees the things we did in secret. Jesus sees the lies we have told. He sees the times we were selfish and unkind and disobedient. But that is not all Jesus sees. During the judgment, Jesus looks into our heart. He sees if we are sorry for the wrong things we have done. He sees if we have asked him to forgive our sins. He sees if we have chosen to let him guide our lives. When Jesus comes to your record, he looks to see what he has chosen. Have you asked him to forgive your sins? Are you letting him guide your life each day? If so, Jesus will choose you to be part of his kingdom. He will write your name in the book of life. Jesus also wipes out the records of all your sins. He will cleanse the sins from the sanctuary. They will all be gone, as if they had never happened. But some people will choose to hold on to their sins. They won't let Jesus help them to do what is right. These people would not be happy in heaven. They would, they would bring selfishness and sin there. They would ruin heaven. When Jesus comes to the records of these people, he is sad. He has to say, this one cannot be trusted in my kingdom. He cannot write their names in the book of life. These people and their sins will have to be destroyed. Now, let's find out when the sanctuary is cleansed. Daniel 8 verse 14 says, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. 2,300 days, what a mystery. And truly, it was a mystery for many years. Finally, over 150 years ago, God helped some people discover what it meant. First, they remembered that in prophecy, a day stands for a year. The Bible says, I have appointed thee each day for a year. Ezekiel 4 verse 6. Now, they understood that 2,300 days stands for 2,300 years. As they studied, they learned that the 2,300 years began in 457 BC. But they still needed to know when the 2,300 days ended. They did some math to find the answer. They found that 2,300 days would begin in AD 1844. 1844 was the day for Jesus to begin his work of cleansing the sanctuary in heaven. 1844, Jesus began looking at the records of many years ago. He started with the records of his people who had already died. Next are the records of the people who are alive. That means that soon he will look at your record and at my record. The books in heaven show everything you have ever done. The good things you have done are written there. All the wrong things you have done. Your sins are also written in the books. Are you sorry for your sins? Are you sorry for your selfishness and disobedience? Then tell Jesus about it. Tell him what you have done. Tell him everything. Say, Jesus, please forgive me. Please give me your grace to do what is right. Jesus loves to answer this prayer. Read with me what the Bible says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. And just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9. When you confess your sins, Jesus says, I died for those sins. They are covered with my blood. I forgive you. He writes, forgiven over every sin that you confess. 
When he finishes the investigative judgments, he will blot out those sins forever. We don't know when Jesus will finish the judgments. We don't even know if we will be alive tomorrow. But we know that today we can make a decision for Jesus. Today, you can open your heart to Jesus. The Bible says, now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. Do you want him to show you anything in your, in your life that, could, that would keep you away from his kingdom? Do you want him to give you his grace to do what is right? If so, kneel with me while we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we hear you calling to our lives. Uh, please show us anything in our lives that would keep us from your kingdom. Please give us grace to do what is right. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I think we deserve a pat on the back. I'll pat your back if you pat mine. Deal. Pat, 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 pat. Hey, me too. Pat, 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 pat. Don't forget me. Hello, everyone. What's going on? Oh, hi, Uncle Sostin. We're just congratulating each other for helping people. As well you should. You guys are doing a great job mowing lawns, raking leaves, weeding gardens, collecting food for the hungry. People are very thankful for what you do. I hear even the mayor is impressed. Oh, by the way, have you seen that new castle at the fairgrounds? Castle? At the fairgrounds? Yeah, it's huge. It's massive. It's humongous. And, get this, it has 12 gates, and each gate has a letter on it. Wow, it's cool. What do the letters mean, Uncle Sostin? I don't know, but we can go find out if you want to. Yeah! <laughs> but first, I want to show you something. What is that, Uncle Sostin? Looks like a computer tablet. What does it do? Oh, it can do many things. It can teach you stuff you didn't know, show you how to go places you've never been before, and answer questions no one can answer. Wow, does it have a name? I call it Technobrain, or TNB for short. Here, I'll ask it something. <clears throat> TNB, what's the shortest route from here to the fairgrounds? To go to fairground, head north two blocks, turn left. Proceed one block, turn right. 
Fairground, just past park, on left. Wow! Can TNB tell us something about the new castle at the fairgrounds? Well, let's see. TNB, what's with the new castle? The castle has 12 gates, and behind each gate is a room. But only one gate can open to enter the castle. This gate has the letter C on it, and behind it is the C room. The other rooms can be entered only from the room beside it. After room C is room E, and this is followed by room L. All the room letters put together spell a word. What do all the room letters spell? The room letters spell celebrations. And what is the castle celebrating? The celebrations castle is celebrating health. Did you say health? Affirmative. Anyone who enters the castle will learn important lessons about living a healthy life. Oh, that's important stuff to know. We all want to be healthy. So, proactive kids, you're ready for a healthy castle adventure? Then let's go! big letter E on the door. I know one E thing about this room. It's empty. Being healthy means you're supposed to be empty? No, that can't be it. Hey, look, there's an arrow on the floor. It's pointing to that arrow over there. Yeah, and that arrow over there is pointing to another one over by the wall. There are arrows all over this room. Think we should follow them? Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Anyone know where we're going? Yes, to the next arrow. In other words, we're going nowhere. This is boring. Maybe, maybe we should walk faster. Fine with me. Now we're going nowhere faster. Maybe we should run? Okay, here we go. Now we're going nowhere a lot faster. Hey, Erica, see if TNB knows why we're running around in an empty room like a bunch of bats flying around in an empty cave. Okay, TNB, why are we running around in an empty room like a bunch of bats flying around in an empty cave? What is happening to you? What's happening to me? Well, I'm, I'm getting tired. 
What else? I'm breathing hard, and my heart is pumping like mad. And I'm beginning to sweat. I don't like to sweat. Very unladylike. What is happening to you? Well, I'm running, I'm walking, I'm breathing hard, I'm, I'm... E. It begins with E. We're... We're what? Hold it! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, but I think I have the answer. What is it? Running, walking, getting out of breath, sweating. What are we doing? Playing soccer? No, we're exercising. That's what the E is for. Exercise. Bill, you're a genius. That's the lesson of the arrows and this room. To be healthy, we walk, we run, we sweat, we exercise. Exercise. See you next time. Bye.